As I'm speaking right now, we're about halfway done with RI 3D, uh, 9.30, and um, things are going incredibly well. Basically, we've got a completely mechanically functioning robot. The problem is we haven't really tested anything, any of the final products. So far, uh, the robot capabilities include uh, shooting high goal, shooting low goal. We can, in theory, traverse a lot of the obstacles, and we'll figure that out when we, uh, when we test them. So we've got all of the field obstacles built, including the tower, all eight defenses. Uh, they're currently in our shop right now, and uh, we're ready to go with it. So far, the, basically the biggest obstacles we've encountered are getting the chain on our drivetrain to work. We've got people who, they've never dealt with chain before, and we're dealing with 25 chain with, we've got no chain breaker, and it's very difficult to uh, deal with chain without a chain breaker and the, the correct tools. So we've got to use a grinder, we've got to do things that probably aren't recommended for chain. Uh, the chain pr took, uh, we had planned eight hours to get the drivetrain together, and now we're counting down to uh, like probably 24 hours, 36 hours, to get, and our drivetrain is finally complete. Everything above the drivetrain looks really promising. Our, in our prototype, we've got a wheeled shooter. I know there's going to be a big debate for a lot of teams. Do I do a wheeled shooter or do I do a catapult? You know, catapults are the go-to way to, to storm a tower. But you know what? It's probably not the best way to go for this game. I could be proven wrong, but I think wheeled shooters, they're versatile. You can change how far you're shooting. They're more reliable. All that you have to worry about is the battery voltage and the, the wheels wearing down. As opposed to with the catapult, you've got to worry about where the ball is sitting on the catapult, how the catapult is firing, the tension in the, the catapult tensioning system, the catapult torsion system. With a wheeled shooter, I think you can get a, a lot more accuracy out of it. And with a catapult, if the ball is sitting an inch left or right in your catapult, you've got to worry about the accuracy with that. I think a wheeled shooter will be more consistent and more accurate than a, a catapult will be. And you can refer back to old games. Go back to uh, 2014. Wheeled shooters are proven to be effective. Catapults were also effective that year, but you didn't see a lot of catapults at, you know, in the upper levels. There were a lot more wheeled shooters than there were catapults. And that we're shooting the ball 20 to 25 feet, and the maximum distance from like the furthest back point to the tower that you're ever going to have to shoot is about 20 to 21 feet. So we're shooting the maximum distance we need to. It just gives us more range, more capability, more flexibility. And uh, with 20 feet, with the 20 foot range, we're more than happy with that. Uh, like I said in my, the day one update, we're planning on parking and shooting. So in theory, we're not gonna have to shoot more than five feet, but having that capability is something that we're really, we really pushed for. Another thing we really pushed for was having the robot below one foot four, below 16 inches, which would give our robot the ability to go underneath the low bar. I think a lot of teams are going to overlook that low bar. I think uh, they'll think, oh, my line sprinters will kill that defense. I think it'll be overlooked, and I think having that skill will be very valuable. To a rookie team, I think a uh, good low bar a breacher bot, and if you can go underneath that low bar, you can fetch the, the boulders for your team. That'll be a very valuable skill. It's probably a third robot, second pick right there. But we also have a very cool idea for a climber. And at the beginning, I thought you'd have to pick between being a climbing bot and being a low bar bot, having that capability. But we have a design that it's nearly flat, very, very flat, and it can extend up to the height that we need it to. I think the top of the bar is six foot four inches off of the ground, a little bit shorter off the breach. If you do the trigonometry, uh, it, the breach adds about three and a half inches to your robot. So you're only going to about six foot six and a half feet, six one about. Uh, the concept, uh, basically the idea with our climber is we've got angled aluminum or really any kind of metal and there are three layers so pretty much picture a Z. At each uh, change of direction there'd be a spring and a spring so you can push it flat but it always wants to go straight, it wants to open up 
we create a hinge at each joint so as to reduce the side load and we would use a winch at the very top of the z there would be a hook to grab onto the bar and with that hook that would uh, there would be a strap connecting from the hook down to a winch so when we want to release it our climber our hook would go up it's it's kind of a you can kind of think of it like a grappling hook a controlled grappling hook so instead of shooting it with pressurized air which is illegal you're controlling it you're connected to it the entire time and it'll stay up there you don't have to like worry about gravity taking it down and then once the grappling hook is hooked on to the climbing bar the winch will wind it up and the robot will actually tip up and it'll vertically go up. I know you have to get above two feet, so it'll be a little bit of winching. And you can do that in the final 20 seconds, so it'll take a good driver, but with practice, it's something that's very doable. So a little bit about our intake. As I said in our day one up, we had a sim motor, now we've got a mini sim motor on our, on our intake and shooter, and we're direct driving it. Oh, actually, we've got our mini sim in a versus planetary at a one-to-one -one ratio. And we're running, we're direct driving four inch wheels off of that. And we've got two mini sims, two versa planetaries. We've got double wheel, identical on both sides. We're using eight inch pneumatic wheels from Andy Mark. And we also have a six inch high grip wheel above. Uh, the center is about two inches higher. So when it hits the higher obstacles, it'll lift our frame up and get it ready for the, the pneumatic wheel. Uh, having two different wheels, wheel elevations, I think will be very valuable. We get to test it, so...